Hey, hello everyone, and, and welcome back to the History Room on Zoom. I'm Gary Sheffer. I'm a trustee at the Hudson Area Library and um, work also as the chair of the library's History Room Committee. Uh, today's like a, a home game uh, for me because I have two of my friends who work on the History Room as well uh, with us to talk about the History Room itself and what we offer uh, there and the services and the materials. Paul Costa, he's the References and Technology Services Librarian. That's quite a mouthful, Paul. Yeah, it's accurate to what I do here. <laughs> Thank you for being on the History Room on Zoom. And then, of course, a lot of people know Jim Hoon, uh, who's one of our indispensable History Room researchers. And he conducts research of all kinds on behalf of our library patrons uh, through requests that we receive in the library for all kinds of things. And we're going to talk about that. So Paul and Jim, welcome to the History Room on Zoom. Thank you. So I'm going to start with you, Jim. Um, how long have you been um, involved in the History Room? Uh, after I retired in the middle of 2018 and moved to Hudson full time, is when I uh, started in the fall of 2018. Um, but I've had an interest in Hudson and history forever. So yeah, so I was gonna ask you, why'd you, why, why'd you get involved? Well, I'm a librarian for one thing, uh, and I've always been interested in libraries, and I've always been interested in history. And uh, being retired, I had time and uh, I thought it would be a good, good involvement. And Terrific. We're so happy to have you. We're going to dive into that a little bit on um, what you do. Paul, I'll come back to you. Can you generally describe the history room and what it offers? What, what is the history room? Uh, sure. Uh, so the history room is a dedicated space where we hold uh, historic materials for the city of Hudson, uh, Greenport, Stockport, and the general area. We have a super focus on Hudson, um, and then, you know, it kind of radiates out. Um, so you have more of a focus on Hudson, but we do have a number of materials on the area around Hudson. Um, and it's a space where we can physically house our more delicate and uh, honestly irreplaceable items uh, we have a collection of bound materials. We have a comprehensive collection of the Hudson High yearbook, uh, mm -hmm. the directory, um, the directory being one of our major uh, pieces of writing reference, I think. And we and, have uh, we have the street directories, the house, the polks, almost a complete collection of those. Um, yeah, and. Uh -huh. um, Oh, Jim, I'll need some help with this one. Uh, there's specifically one about the water lines, I think. Mm -hmm. That's a useful reference for the housing uh, number changes. The tap record indicates when, when buildings were connected to the water system. And sometimes that has, uh, helps, help, helps illuminate other issues like mm -hmm. the owner or the original location or establishment of the house. So, so Jim, it's uh, the history room has sort of these archived collection of materials, some of which, as Paul says, are irreplaceable and originals and all of that. Um, how do people access through volunteers like yourself? How do you get to all of this rich historical material about Hudson and Stockport Greenport? Well, uh, of course, um, in before the pandemic, it was wonderful to have people come in, uh, <laughs> right. meet them and to hear their interests and their stories. Um, now it's more likely online. Um, there's a, on the library's website, you can request through the History Room um, research online, mm -hmm. or you can call the library and initiate it that way. And you can still walk in and you could speak to someone uh, and we would follow up. Okay. So, so Jim, what's, uh, I know we've been getting requests during sort of the quarantine lockdown. 
for things um, such as the history of Promenade Hill, you know, the park at the um, base of Warren Street. What, what, what's a typical research project, Jim, that somebody would ask you to do on their behalf or work with them? What, can you give us an example? Well, one of the most common ones um, is somebody who, who has purchased a, a home in Hudson and they want to restore or renovate it. And the city requires, since we have a historic district uh, and regulations pertaining to it, that they contact us to see if we can illuminate anything about the history or design uh, of the house. And sometimes that's possible. Um, and sometimes it's not, but that's a very common request. Yeah. And how would you, Jim, how would you, how do you find out what documents do you use that we have in the history room to see if you can help or not in those kinds of situations? Well, if they're interested in the physical um, appearance of the house historically, uh, of course, we would go to our photograph collection and, and we don't always have uh, the building in question, but sometimes we do. Uh, if it's an informational request, then we have a broader possibility, and, and that would include the, the annual directories of Hudson, which start in 1851 um, and are a tremendously valuable resource of people and buildings um, and the change over time. And maps uh, mm -hmm. will sometimes illuminate. We have a variety of, of wonderful maps uh, over time. and uh, and. It depends upon the question sometimes, but those are the most common resources. And we have a number of texts to books that deal with the history of Hudson that people can, can, can look at. Absolutely. And, and of course, they're a source of reference also. And we have pretty much every book that I'm aware of that was ever <laughs> published uh, about Hudson or pertaining to Hudson okay. or some, some issue about Hudson. Terrific, terrific. Paul, you know, we, we also, I'll come back to you, during normal times, uh, we do history room lectures during the evening, and we of course had to suspend those uh, during uh, COVID um, when taking steps to protect people. And the library right now, we're in sort of this period where we do curbside service mm -hmm. if you request materials. But luckily you've been working on uh, digitizing um, a lot of our materials over the last few years. What, what can you find uh, online on the library's website from a historical documents perspective? What, what does the history room offer there? Sure. Um, so if you go to our website and uh, we'll have a link uh, in the material for this video, um, you can find a lot of different resources. Um, there are a number of great resources that you can find on the open web, and we have a collection of links for that. Uh, but in terms of what we have, uh, we've been digitizing, as you said, uh, various collections. We have our historic postcard collection uh, digitized. That was originally a really big, ambitious uh, exhibition that we did uh, some time ago. And we kind of used the digitization that we were using for that to also upload mm -hmm. to a uh, place called New York Heritage. Uh, I believe it used to be called Hudson River Valley Heritage. Uh, so it's available online that way. And uh, we have a focus collection through the Hudson Area Library. But if you're just browsing through New York Heritage, you'll find some of our stuff uh, if you do a search. Um, okay. In addition to that, um, we have a number of, uh, as you said, we had uh, history lectures before we had to close down. <laughs> and um, thankfully, we've had a lot of recordings of that. And we've uploaded them to YouTube. And we've embedded those videos, uh, or a collection of those videos, to our website. So you can actually watch them uh, from the comfort of your own home. Terrific. Uh, I, I hear there's a really great one on the history of the General Worth Hotel. Uh, well, <laughs> yes. Um, we have I did that one, folks. Uh, <laughs> that was my one of my my only lecture, I guess, I ever gave. But a lot of terrific. Giffy Whitbeck, Carl Whitbeck, a bunch of folks 
um, who, who have, over the years have done lectures that are so interesting uh, available uh, on, on the website. Um, so, so Jim, I wanted to also come back to you and, and, and mention one thing is that we do preserve, and Paul, you can answer this as well too, we work with an archivist, trained archivist, to make sure our collection is, I guess, conserved, if, if that's the right word, in, in the right way. And that's a big undertaking. Um, we, Paul mentioned the postcards. Uh, we have maps and documents, uh, many of which are original. Um, and so all of that is done and the room itself is um, kept at archival conditions, if that's the right phrase, from a temperature standpoint and all of that. So that's a big effort as well of the history room is to make sure we're preserving these things physically um, so that they can be used over the years. Absolutely, I, I would, uh, in addition to the actual history room, there's a accessory room uh, archive where we keep things that are uh, carefully stored. And um, it's, it's amazing what you find there that you didn't know we had. <laughs> and upon what research you're doing, you're fi constantly finding new and interesting things. Um, right. And this past Saturday, for example, I was working for a patron um, regarding uh, research that related to Columbia Street, which used to be called Diamond Street. And, and there's a, a, a well-known book on Hudson called Diamond Street written by someone named Bruce Hall. And in that archive <clears throat> was a letter from Bruce Hall to his editor regarding a, an article he was going to publish in the Old House Journal about his restoration effort of 239 Warren Street. Okay, wow. Which is, a, uh, the article was printed, by the way, in Old House Journal in 1991. It's very interesting to read that. But what I was re referring to was the letter this uh, letter that it was an original, not a copy, of him to his editor, Susan LaRosa, and he began it with a poem. Um, and it said, Dear Susan, there once was a young man named Bruce who rode a lot, fast and loose. He knows Sue will cut it, and he can't rebut it, but Bruce is just so darn verbose. <laughs> Where Bruce, of course, being a, a charm, charming uh, corruption of verbose. Right. <laughs> but it was just fascinating to come across that. He's a really interesting guy, and, and his uh, article and the book on uh, Diamond Street are all very interesting. Yeah, I'll have to take a look at that. I haven't seen that. What's, I was going to ask you, Jim, what's your favorite thing that we have in well, the history room? As I say, you're always discovering stuff, but the, the single most important and interesting and, and versatile resource, in my opinion, is the directories. Yeah. It, they had not only building information and owner and resident information, but the occupation of the residents. And so you can trace a person's history if they're in Hudson for years, as well as the, biz, the, the business or the building. Right. And it's, uh, it can oh, tell- that's invaluable. I was, I was a reporter, I remember, back in the 1980s in Hudson, and a newspaper reporter. And this was pre-internet, of course. And those things, those Polk's directories, were our Bible. You know, if you needed to find out, you couldn't look it up on the internet. But if you needed to find, you know, there was a fire at a building or something, that was where you went. Right. Well, it's still a Bible, especially in the earlier years, and uh, there's no there's no other way to get to some of that information. Terrific. It's not, not online. So, so Paul, what's what are we? Uh, what's coming up for the history room? Is there? We're we're waiting, of course, to get back in the library so we can resume our lectures. Uh, I know we're doing some projects. Um, really important projects for the community coming up, oral history project that's been in the work for a while that we recently got a grant for. Is there anything we can mention that uh, give people some idea of what we're working on going forward? Uh, well, the archival work is uh, continuing. Uh, we have our archivist uh, hard at work um, making some visits to the library. Uh, we also have some uh, 
summer staff who are helping with uh, scanning and copying materials. Uh, we're also doing um, what's called a needs assessment with um, one of the bigger uh, document preservation organizations in New York. Uh, it's called DIPSNY. Unfortunately, I can't remember what the acronym <laughs> is for. Nobody but, can, Paul. Nobody can. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, so yeah, we're doing the needs assessment and uh, basically we're taking photos. We're trying to kind of replicate a visit that they would make. Um, and that way we can show them where we're at and they can give us recommendations. That way we can kind of leverage the bigger, more professional organizations for preservation specifically so that they can help us to do an even better job at maintaining our collection, organizing it and keeping it in perpetuity. Terrific. Now, I'll, I'll ask my last question uh, for both of you. We often get donations, people coming in, which we, which we love. Um, what are we looking for when people, you know, people cleaning out their attic or their basement and uh, uh, people come in with photographs or videos? Um, how does that process work? What, what are we looking for when people are thinking about making a donation to the history room of um, historic material? Well, I, it, from my perspective, ideally it should be content, uh, whether photographic or textual, that, that illuminates some perspective of the history of Hudson. Uh, we, we're not actually a genealogical um, library, and That's so good point. there's a limit to how much we'd be interested in strictly uh, family information that doesn't relate or interact with Hudson per se. So uh, we would have to see, we're, we're interested in, in lots and things that we never dreamed about that, that exist that we may not know about. So uh, we are eager to have people bring things to us, but we would have to review them to see whether they have uh, pertinence to our collection. Exactly, exactly. Terrific. Well, one of the other things that we're hoping to resume um, is we've done a couple tours of Hudson. Uh, the History Room has sponsored bus tours with uh, our colleague John Craig and Jim providing um, uh, talking uh, about some of the sites in Hudson, historical sites. I don't know when we're going to be able to resume those kinds of things, but we want to bring history out of the library as well too to people. And those have proven to be very popular, waiting lists to get on the bus. And um, it's that kind of thing that uh, we want to we hopefully can resume in the near future. The, the facets of Hudson and Hudson's history are just so amazingly varied that there's always something of interest, uh, depending upon uh, you know anything that you, you want. It's, there's something about it in Hudson. Yes, there is. And, to, and we get both folks who are new to the city and people who've been around to come to our lectures on the bus tours. Uh, there's quite a lot, as you say, Jim, quite a lot of interest in the history. Uh, and so much of it is preserved. We're lucky in Hudson physically of our history structurally and in other ways that uh, we've always got something new we're working on. Terrific. Well, thank you both for uh, joining the history room on Zoom. And I'm really looking forward to the time when we can all be together in our in our history room talking about uh, projects that we're working on together. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Gary. Take care. Thanks, Paul. You're welcome.